I'll pick that up in a minute. Hi everybody, Adam Savage in my cave. My cave is an unholy mess. It is really hot. It's like 80 here right now. I know that's not hot where you are in the world, but for me here in San Francisco, it's pretty hot. Um, hey, I've got all of this hand laid, handmade paper I bought on uh, Amazon. I'll include a link in the description. It's fun stuff. It's good crafting stuff. And I'm gonna craft with it today. Instead of cleaning my shop, I'm gonna make a book. We're gonna make a book today. Many years ago, uh, I got a divorce. And this is 2002. And uh, I had a lot of free time. So I did a couple things. I went to Ikea a lot to fill out my bachelor apartment. Uh, and I decided to make a replica of Indiana Jones Grail Diary. And I actually made 10 of them because when you're making something that tedious, it's just got all those parts to it. Uh, there's only, uh, making more than one is only a little bit harder than making one. And you can get some efficiency. So I made 10. Uh, and this is it. Uh, this is my replica of Indiana Jones Grail Diary. We have covered this before on the channel. There's a link in the description. Uh, but what I want to talk about today is that when I did this, I actually, now I don't want to say that I bound it correctly, but I bound it. Uh, and binding books is a ancient practice. We have been gathering sheaves of paper together for millennia. Uh, we've been using the most rudimentary book cover design, which I think is the Coptic design, uh, since at least the fourth century. What? Um, <clears throat> and it's not that hard. Um, I, I was looking up bookbinding this morning, kind of refresh my memory. I remember the rudiments of it, but I just wanted to make sure there was nothing I was forgetting. And one of the things I discovered is that people have a really difficult time explaining bookbinding in a way that is really clear. And I mean, this is the thing about science communication, it's hard. Uh, and bookbinding has a, a complexity to it because there's a lot of moving parts, but Overall, it is not that complicated a system, and it's a bunch of knots and holes and varying protocols for joining those knots and holes together, and I'm going to do it today. We're going to make a, uh, we're going to make a grimoire type of thing using a bunch of this paper. I want a book, I want a book that's uh, a little bit over fat. I want to feel a book that is a little bit over fat, and we're going to go all the way. I think I've got the leather I need. We're gonna go all the way to covering a cover. That's today. I, this might be half a day, it might be a full day, I'm not exactly sure. Uh, and please forgive me, bookbinders of the world. I don't mean to say that your art is easy. I mean to say that it is accessible and that it is, even though this is an art form that goes very deep and wide, getting satisfaction out of the art form at an entry level is not super difficult. And that is not true of every discipline. So uh, let's make a book. And it's not quite a how-to, but if you're inspired to make a book, um, or if you know some great online resources that explain things really clearly, the thing about bookbinding is a picture is worth about 10,000 words. Um, Writing sentences like, first stick the needle out of the hole and then into the next hole. I found a website that kept referring to figure 41, 42, 43, and yet none of the figures were numbered. Gah! Uh, as you can imagine, when things are explained poorly or explained in a way that I find confusing, I'm all like, I want to help. Um, so forgive me uh, also, bookbinders, when I get all these terms wrong for the various parts and pieces that I'm going to uh, do. But uh, what I'm hoping is, is that this is fun and inspiring and simple enough that you want to try it. I guess that's go to the tagline for this whole channel. Okay, um, let me get uh, some perspective. All right, look at this new brayer I got. Isn't this great? <laughs> for making corners. Uh, oh, so here we have paper and my claw scissors are near the paper. We're gonna remedy that, they're going away. Uh, when you want to make a book, 
uh, in the way that I'm making it, you start with groups of pages called signatures. Now, I bought these papers in batches, and uh, there's a lot of self-similar pieces in here, and so I'm going to be mixing them up. Uh, we are going to do six-page, 12-page signatures here, uh, which means I'm going to take three sheets of double-wide uh, and I am going to fold them oh wow your paper molds were funky weren't they all right that's good enough so there's one excellent that is one signature three Oh, hey, is that three? No, it's four. Oh. oh, I'm not even remotely done. I have 24 signatures of 12 pages each. That is 288 pages. This is great. This is exactly the size of book I wanted to make. So I'm gonna put these guys away. Okay, so now what do we do? Now we sew them together and sewing them together is a thing. These parallel bar clamps are great for exactly this next operation. These parallel bar clamps are uh, the tool that I retrieved from my grandfather, Cushman Hagenson's workshop. So what I wanna do is I want, at every corner here, three pages are folded and I want to punch a set of holes through them, and I'm gonna do it using a technique with a handsaw. All right, so, so here's how this is gonna go. I'm going to put the pages. So as I'm doing this, I am tamping all those corners to be as close to the edge as possible. That is really, really important. And now I'm gonna wedge them between the, uh, the clamps here. Now I want to tighten down. And hopefully I'll have even these up. Well, actually, no, I can already see something's wrong. Their alignment and squareness is just empty. Um, if you don't have bar clamps like this, you can just use normal seat clamps and two pieces of wood. There's, yeah. Oh, look at that, look at that, see that? Oh, that's great. That is pretty freaking stellar. Good. <laughs> 12 inches, okay, so let's say we'll start there. That's 11 inches. So, <clears throat> I'm gonna use a saw here to make a cut. And this cut is gonna make a little slice 
at each stage here in the book. And that is going to give me a hole. That's just deep enough. I think that makes it through all three sheets of paper. Hey, I found book binding needles. Woohoo! As I'm doing this, I'm thinking about a bunch of different things. I mean, it's lovely, tedious work. Um, but one of the things I'm thinking about is the way in which we stop ourselves from trying new things. And bookbinding is one of these things where there is a body of knowledge. It is deep and wide and millenniums old, right? Like this is, bookbinding is, it's like astringing, right? It's like, it's been around forever and that means that there are all these different practices within bookbinding. Uh, there are different names of knots and there are different ways of joining the page signatures together, but they all, like there are certainly some disciplines like watch repair, which requires a, a, like a, a very large bare minimum amount of understanding to achieve. But books are, uh, bookbinding is, I don't mean to say that it is an easy art form, but I do want to say that in my experience, it's incredibly accessible. And so while there are lots of things to know about bookbinding and like a perusal of any bookbinding websites or guide or how to's can lead you to be uh, a little mystified by how much there is to know and understand. What I want to say is it only kind of matters because all you're real like, I know that there's aspects of this that I'm doing wrong or that, you know, could be more efficient, but the ultimate result is that I'm ending up with a book whose pages uh, stay together and uh, that will last for a while. It's not going to be the most beautiful book in the world. That's not what I'm making. Um, but I am, you know, making a tome that will hold itself together and allow me to make sketches in it and allow me to uh, enjoy the object because books, in addition to being repositories, are magnificent objects. You know, and you know what? Actually, one of the very first things I ever, quote unquote, made 
with little booklets. I remember in second and third grade, specifically second grade, um, where uh, my uh, I would take cr uh, craft paper, the craft paper that was the, you know, children's craft paper, the same colored paper we've been using forever. <laughs> Um, and I would staple together a little, like, I would, you know, fold the paper four ways and cut the edges and make a little quarter page stapled book. And I just remember specifically writing at the end, thank you for enjoying this little booklet that I made. Um, books are compelling objects. They really are. So uh, the reason I am stating all this is uh, I want you to, if you are thinking that bookbinding might be fun, freaking try it. It's not that complicated. And the rewards are magnificent. Um, yeah, that's all. It's like when I, uh, when I learned whip making, I had a guide. I had a, a, a guide that I bought at um, Tandy Leather. And the guide had some ideas in it. You know, it said use eight ounce latigo, uh, which I went and got. And then, you know, it had some other things about wax twine and how you were supposed to wrap it. And as I was working on it, I was like, I don't think that's gonna work. And I basically had an alternative way to wrap up the um, the book, sorry, the, uh, the whip. I, a whip is a succession of braided cores, uh, braid, braids and flat cores. And at a key point, I diverged from what the book was saying to do because it, did, it, it was too hard. And I ended up using wax twine to sort of secure something while I did a wrap option, op operation. And later on, I ended up corresponding with David Morgan, who built all the whips for the first three Raiders films. And um, David was like, oh, yeah, the thing you did, that's a standard practice. It just wasn't in the book, but yeah. And I like that was a key moment for me of realizing that I had in just looking for efficiency of my own stuff. I had come upon a standard practice. Um, and it gave me a lot of confidence to trust myself. So I'm doing this bookbinding, right? And I looked up bookbinding this morning and there's all sorts of different stitches and knot methods and ways to hold the pages and such. But what I wanna to say to you is I'm not feeling a pressure to get one of them exactly right. And I'm sure that with a little more knowledge, this could go faster and easier for me and look neater. I, I'm, I know this. But I also know I won't be able to kind of see that clarity unless I've actually completed this thing. It's only once I've done it that I can kind of hold all the pieces and information in my head. Well, it's this, this is the longest way of me saying Goethe's famous quote, that whatever you want to begin, you should just begin. If you're thinking about bookbinding, just do it. It's really, really fun. Yeah, 23. It's a good number. Um, now look, the whole point, there you go. You can see the stitching and 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 in each of these, the thread has come through a hole and gone around its neighbor at the bottom and come back up. And so they're all being held, but they're not quite squeezing the sides of the book together. And that's really what the, this sewing binding is about. It's about holding the book together, but not so tight that it's actually springing the pages out. You don't want, you don't want that. You just want, you just want that, right? Just like that. Um, and like I was saying, there are binding methods and sewing methods that include knots that allow you to tighten as you go, which is really, really cool. But you don't have to do it that way. Like, yes, do it that way if you understand it. But I was like looking at the pictures this morning and I was like, I don't know if I can wrap my head around this. I can wrap my head around this and then I can fix this. And that's what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna clamp this back up and then I'm going to go through and with the sewing needle and I'm gonna just tighten all this up a bit. Yeah, turns out you can do that. I have the clamps propped up on a little bit of foam board here so that they uh, provide just a little bit of proud, well, you'll see, I did the same thing before.
the next thing I need to do, the next thing that's incumbent to do is to uh, put a piece of, just to glue a piece of linen across the back of this. That's how I did it with the uh, Raider's book. And I, there are many methods to do this, but that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna cut a piece of linen. Now what I have is this old flour sack um, uh, uh, towel from our kitchen that I loved and that sort of just deteriorated. And I'm sad about that. So I'm gonna use some linen from it as a nostalgia thing. I think I have my book cover here. This is some, uh, this is some framing mat board. Let's just see if I like what I've got. I think it's pretty good. Yeah. I think I actually want to go even closer. Yeah, I think I want to go to like there and there. Okay, that's almost right. Yes, that feels right. That does. Good, 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 good. Okay, so now we're gonna turn this into a book cover. First, we're gonna glue it, glue some parts together. I have glued together two doubles uh, for the book covers with high glue. I'm gonna add a, uh, a linen little strengthener here between these two halves to kind of bridge that gap. And then I'm going to uh, glue in some end papers and attach those to this book. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, right, they'll be, yeah, first is it, yeah.
All right, uh, the book is glued. It is mostly there. Some of this stuff will set over the next few days. Especially that, let me get that business out of here. I have filled a uh, spritz bottle here with some leather dye, and I'm not afraid to use it. Yes, that. I'm gonna take this home tonight, look at it, smell it, spend some time with it, and I'll bring it back in and finish it in the morning. Yeah, finally made something to put on my bedside table. I love making things. See you guys tomorrow. All right, hey guys. Um, wait, which is the cover? Is that the cover? <laughs> I keep forgetting. Uh, this book is done for now. Uh, I drew a couple of pictures in it. I drew a plate with a hole in it. I drew a bolt. I don't know, those drawings pleased me. I don't know whether I'll keep this as a sketchbook, um, but for right now, I'm going to call this book finished. Uh, it could use some more weathering, but I no longer, I, I have to wait for the next point of view to arrive. This is a fantastic foundation, and it was really fun to make a book make a book <clears throat> this is my theater version of book binding uh thank you guys for joining me for this and if you have made some books show some pictures in the comments uh thank you guys for joining me i'll see you next time Bye.